Well, hi there, everyone, and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai Channel. So, you know, a funny thing is I've always tried to get, oh, hang on, the paper butt maple is poking me in the back. <laughs> but a funny thing is I've always tried to get a, an English U, and you'd be amazed how difficult it is to, to find one. You go to garden nurseries or garden centers, and more often than not, they're quite expensive because I guess they're slow growing. So the value is, is in the you know, amount of time it's taken to care for them. And propagating them apparently is supposed to be quite easy and straightforward. But I followed all different ideas of, of uh, propagate, you know, propagating cuttings in the spring with the aim of uh, the root development to happen over the summertime going into the autumn and winter. Or as some suggest, you know, you should take cuttings in the autumn or early winter with the aim of, you know, the roots slowly developing as you get into the, the spring of the following year. And then hopefully you should end up with a, a plant or a tree the following year. But I've tried that and it didn't work. But I had a bit of luck the other day. As I say, I did come across a little bit of luck. And that was my neighbor was working in, in their garden and they're digging up different things and, you know, really digging out different shrubs and that. And they had a, a like a, a heap of garden rubbish. And on top of that heap was what we have down here, which is an English U. So I've just had this tree stored in this jar of water here just to keep the roots nice and moist. Uh, we can see there's a bit of a breakage on the root just there. And that's just because they, my neighbor didn't take any care when taking this out the ground. You know, as I say, they were just doing a bit of weed, well, not weeding, but garden work digging out old shrubs and that, and they ripped this out the ground. But not a bad root system, apart from that broken one just up on top. But I think if we got rid of that one, you still have some nice healthy roots down below. But so I think the first thing that we do is we cut off that dodgy root that's already broken. There's no point in keeping that. So all we do, we just follow the break point, which you can see is just coming down here. And then we just snip down that, just like there, or just like that even. Just get through. Now, U is usually quite hard. There we go. So that's that root uh, taken off. Now, there's no point in keeping that on. I know you could say that you, you could have possibly pushed that back and it might have fused, but seeing as though you have you know, quite a few roots or other roots, um, I'm pretty sure this should, should take and should survive. I mean, I know you've probably seen many other videos where people take a, a plant like this or a tree out the ground, um, pull it out of its pot, trim back a lot of the roots, stick it in some bonsai uh, soil, uh, prune up the top in a, in a very sort of heavy manner. You know, they prune off a lot of the foliage and branches, stick a bit of wire on it, and then call that a bonsai tree. But what you never see from that point on is that are the updates. You never know if that tree made it or died. And there's a very strong possibility that the tree died, and that's probably why you never saw it again. So I think soon as though we do have roots, but, you know, we don't have that many roots, given the amount of foliage up top, we can balance this, cut off some of this foliage just to help the roots establish and get grown again. And of course, I'm doing this at the end of November, so it's going to go through winter. We'll keep it in the greenhouse here where it's nice and sheltered and away from frost. And hopefully, you know, come the new year, this should start growing again and should establish. So if we just take a look at some of these branches. So we have a branch that's quite low down here. That's not too bad, but perhaps a little bit low. It depends a lot on where we want our first you know, a row of branches to begin. Uh, we have this branch here. We have quite a thick branch next to it. We have quite a thick branch next to that, which I guess would be a continuation of the trunk going upwards. Then we have a branch just behind there and a branch just there and then a skinny branch just there. So we need to make a decision. Which branches would we like to keep? Well, do we want this branch? I think for the time being, I'm going to keep it. But there is a skinny branch just in the crux of those two branches. So we will get rid of that one. Just like so. There's a branch coming out upwards into in between those two, which you don't want. We might also get rid of a few of these leaves and things growing in here. That doesn't look attractive. And if you keep them in there, they're just going to, well, they look ugly for one, and they're just going to encourage pests and disease and things like that. It's, it's not good having leaves and things in there. That's it. Right, so then. If this is our continuation of the trunk, uh, we, what we could actually do is have, we, it divides into two. So if we get rid of this little branch here, we can see it divides into two. What it means is we don't want this one in the middle. 
So how do we get to that one in the middle? Well, uh, that is a very good question. So if we pull this branch out like this, we should, I think what we'll do, we'll cut it off like that. And then maybe with some concave cutters, we'll come in and clear that up in a minute. Uh, there's a bit of a small shoot coming off there. I don't dislike that, it's quite nice. There's a little shoot coming off just in there, which we don't particularly want. We'll clear up some of this just in here. Uh, there's this branch here, which to be honest, I'm not liking. And of course, if you keep, you can see what you have here. You have a branch there, branch here, branch here, and branch here. Uh, so if we said that we're going to have this and this as our main trunk line, so we're going to come up and then divide into two, you know, we have to be careful then about what we're going to do with these. Uh, now, um, we have a trident here, so I'm going to get rid of the middle one. There you go. As the old expression goes, if you want to solve the riddle, get rid of the middle. And that's tidied up that. And then we have this branch here. Just spin it around like so. We have those in there. Now, do we, do we want this one? Well, it goes straight up. There's no real character to it. Hmm. I think the thing is we have one on the other side. So we have this one, we have this one, we have this one, and this one. Yeah, I think we're going to get rid of this one. Just like that. Okay. And I think for now, we will leave that just like that. Also, before I go ahead and pop this on, I did just want to attack this, these little stubs inside with the concave cutters. Uh, so we just nibble that slightly down, just so it looks a bit tidier and it doesn't... I mean, you could you could leave that there and just have it naturally break down over time. But given that this is a U, you know, it's quite a hard wood, it's slow growing. It, you know, I, I don't know. You, dead wood on a U looks fantastic, but you, you ideally need a more mature tree to make that work. So for this little, little plant, uh, it's going to be a long way before we get to that stage. So all I'm, all I'm going to do now is just get the concave cutters in there and just nibble away that stump just in there. And I think we'll keep this like this. Now you might say that that doesn't look like much of a tree, or sorry, the paper bark maple has hit me in the head. <laughs> but you might say that that doesn't look like much of a tree. And you'd be right. But the thing is, at this stage, all I'm concerned about is keeping the tree alive. And with my rate of or success rate when it comes to cuttings and seeds and everything else, um, I don't particularly want to, I don't want to lose this tree. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pot this on into a very free draining compost. Now, you know, you could say that pumice and uh, acadama and that would work fine. Um, generally speaking, I don't subscribe to that because I like to really do bonsai on a budget. So what I'm going to do is mix up a batch of my grit and cocoa mix we we'll do about 60-70% grit versus 30-40% cocoa. Plant this up in that, leave it here in the greenhouse over winter, and hopefully we'll end up with a very nice tree over the coming years. Okay, so the mixture that I'm going to use is going to be this, which is a very fine grit mix. And this is typically used for the bottom of fish tanks. You know, people line out the bottom of the fish tanks with this, and it works brilliant. I usually buy this in five kilo bags, and uh, it's, it drains very well. It also holds moisture, but it drains. You can see it, it breaks up. It's a very nice, fine grit. You actually, when you buy it, or it, you know, on the sacks, it says sand and gravel, which is a little bit misleading because it's actually a very fine gravel. So I'm gonna use this, and I'm gonna mix this with what's in bucket number two, which is this, which is my cocoa mix. And you, you've probably seen me use this on, on many of my previous projects and in previous videos. I use this all the time. I've used it on plenty of my seedlings and cuttings and things like that. And it's a fantastic medium to grow, uh, you know, to start trees off in. I wouldn't put your more established bonsai trees in this, but to get plants going and to, you know, get them established, this, this stuff is brilliant for root development. It's inert, so it's not acidic, nor is it alkaline and it's very free draining. So what I'm gonna do is mix this with the grid. Okay, so the pot that I plan to use is this big, so I'm not gonna to need too much. 
So all I'm going to do, I generally, I'm not going to measure it out, you know, with any sort of measuring device. I just eyeball it. So we just take some of the grit from down here, put it into the bucket. If we're going to do a 60 to 40 mix, we probably want about a third of this pot, which I'd imagine would be maybe one more scoop about that. So that'll probably do us for the grit. Maybe one more. Let's do one more for luck. There you go. That's the grit. I'm going to take some of the cocoa just in here, put that in there, put this in there like that, and maybe one more scoop. And then all you do, break up some of these clamps, give it a good mix, and then we will use this as our potting mix and plant the yew, the newly pruned up yew tree, into this. And I'm sure this will work absolutely fine. Right, so I have my mixture all ready, primed and ready. And this is the pot that I was planning to put it in. Now we can see the bottom of this pot does have rather big holes. So what I'm going to use as a drainage screen is this very fine white mesh. And I use this for a couple of reasons. One, it's perfect for, for jobs like this. And secondly, it's uh, for me, it's easy to come by. You know, I, I can get this easily. And uh, you may have seen, if you've seen some of these uh, collaboration projects, uh, that I've done where I've sent seeds over to different people. Uh, I think I've done collaborations with uh, Jay from Bonsai's Forever. I've done collaborations with Matt from Bobcat Bonsai. I've done collaborations with Andy from Bonsai Crazy. And I think actually Andy was, uh, he had a different purpose or use for this. So yeah, that's going to be a very interesting thing to see in one of these upcoming videos. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. But yeah, for this project, what we're going to do we're just going to cut a small amount, nothing flash, just a small amount of fabric, just like so. And I'm going to cut a big piece because, you know, this isn't a bonsai pot in, in a, you know, it's just a flower pot. And all we want to do is just put a little bit in the bottom just to stop our very fine soil, you know, going through the holes. I mean, it's, it's, you know, sort of a basic thing that you do in bonsai. And let's just put that to the side. And then all we're going to do is just take some of our mixture and put that into the pot. And this is just going to be as simple as, as simple can be. You know, there's, uh, I'm not doing anything. I mean, all I want to do is just have this tree survive. That paper bark maple is <laughs> yeah, really hitting me in the head. So yeah, all I'm going to do is just put the soil in the pot. And then what we can do is we just grab our new tree from back here, just take the roots, just put them in so that they're, they're comfortable. We have a root that's going up there, but I don't want to prune that off. I don't have too many roots on this tree. So we want to preserve any roots that we have. And hopefully they survive. And then all I'm going to do is just pack in around it, just like so. This is quite a fine soil mix. I might go to town and tip it in just like so. And you know, I don't think I've mixed up enough soil. Right, so with soil batch number two, I'm just going to continue packing in around the yew tree, just making sure that it's nice and bedded into the pot. And then as I say, I'm just going to keep this in the greenhouse here, just to recover, and hopefully by next year we have a very nice looking yew tree. So with this stuff, it's just easier if you just tip it in. This is quite a large pot, so you can, uh, you can do this. Tip it in, just like that. And then you could do some of your, you know, pokery with the chopstick, wherever it's gone. I don't know where my, where's my chopstick gone? I have no idea where that's gone, but you could just pack it in, just like so. Make sure that it's nice and bedded in. That's the important thing. Bed it in. You can use your fingers just to poke it in. That this is, I, I, I'm quite a hands on person. That paper bark maple is still <laughs> poking me in the head. But yeah, this, I'm quite a hands on person. I like to just, uh, yeah, just get your hands in there and, and have a go and just, just do it. And, and that is applies to this, you know, just, Put your hands in there, you know, get, work it in with your fingers, get it in there nice and nice and good. Or if you're, you know, if you're, 
planting a tree in the garden, what do you do? You put your foot in there and your boot in there and you heal it in and you just really get it in the ground. And it's the same here. Obviously, if you had a tree with more roots, you'd want to be a little bit more delicate. But with this, it doesn't have hardly any roots. And I'm just hoping that over the coming spring and that it just puts on some nice growth, the roots develop, fill the pot and we end up with a very nice tree. So that is the little yew tree all potted up. But I actually had more that I wanted to show you in this video. And I think before I do anything else, I'm going to move the maple bark, the paper bark maple because that is just getting annoying and it keeps on hitting me in the head. So let's take this out of here. We can see it's dropped all of its, well, it's starting to drop all of its leaves. This is the, the um, acegrisium that I'm doing the air layers on. So yeah, come next spring, we'll take another look at that and hopefully that works and we end up with three trees for the price of one. So let's just put that just down here. Um, I've received a couple of packages in the post and uh, it's kind of, I've taken a quick look just to see what it is, but I haven't gone into any great depth. So, you know, the big surprise is going to, you know, the surprise for you is going to be the same for me. So yeah, let's take a, a little look and see what these people have sent me. So this has, I don't want to reveal the address because it's on the front here, but this is from Jay, Bo Jay uh, Borstel over on Bonsai's Forever. Great guy, great channel. I strongly recommend you head over to his channel and and subscribe. You know, he's a, he has a, you know, puts out very good videos and he's based over in uh, Florida. So he, he deals a bit more with more, I guess you could say, tropical plants, you know, plant, uh, trees like cerises and things like that. Uh, things that for us over here in the UK can be somewhat challenging. Some people do it really well, but I have a couple of cerises and they're hanging on to life you know if they make it till next year fantastic i'll see what i can do but yeah <laughs> fingers crossed on that one but yeah jay he has some brilliant uh, services some brilliant trees so yeah I strongly recommend you go over and check out his channel but i'll stop waffling on and let's take a look at what he sent me so right so he sent me some fabric and it looks like he sent me some seeds so these seeds so it looks as though we have some crepe myrtle they look like some very interesting seeds. I think he mentioned that these come in little pods. Uh, let's just take one out of the bag and take a better look at it. Yeah, he did mention that these come in pods and yeah, what you have to do is break these open and then there should be a little seed. Yeah, there should be little seeds just inside. You can see all tiny little seeds in there. I think these are almost, he said these are winged seeds. Yeah, so you can see there's a little seed just there uh, a little bit like a maple it has a, a wing tip to it with a seed just at the base yeah i've never grown crepe myrtle before so yeah thanks jay these are going to be a fun fun experiment and i'll see if i can get these to grow all of these little seeds are going all over the place let's put them back in the bag yeah i, I love doing these seed trades or seed swaps for different people because you know what as i say as the old expression goes, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. You know, what you have growing readily around where you are may be very different to the next person. And so a good example would be English sycamore. Around where I live, sycamore trees grow plenty. But for some other people in uh, places like maybe North America or or maybe even Canada or, or Southern America or even, um, I was going to say Europe, but they do have the sycamore over in Europe. But certainly parts of Asia and such, that they've never heard of the sycamore nor have they attempted to grow one so you know for me they grow readily but for you they might not and, and the same for you you know so like for jay this is a good example mimosas so again he said mimosas grow you know grow plenty around where he he is and he sent me some seeds so yeah thanks for that jay that's excellent that's brilliant oh these look like little beans so yeah excellent i'll give them a go yeah thanks for them and the last one are moringas. So there's only a few of these and they almost look like little pods. So I'm not sure if you have to sow these just as they are or if you have to break them open to get the seed. I have to do a little bit of research on that. But yeah, thanks for that, Jay. That's excellent. And he's also sent me this bit of fabric. Now, Jay, I don't know if this is the same as what I sent to you, because I remember wrapping this fabric around your conkers. So yeah, I think 
you have returned my fabric back to me. So yeah, thanks for that, Jay, that's excellent. So that's great. So three little bags of seeds, a little bit of fabric. Let's just put that to the side and take a quick look at, oh, hang on, that is package number two is a smaller one. Let's take a look at package number two and see what's inside. So we don't have any notes, but a little bag of seeds. So let's take a better look at these seeds. So there's quite a few in this bag. Uh, let's just cover, let's just grab one and take a look at it. So have a look just in here. So this, I believe, is a, sh a sugar pine. So this is a sugar pine seed. Now I've never grown a sugar pine before. I've grown plenty of Scotch pine, but never a sugar pine. So this is going to be a fun experiment. So these sugar pine seeds, these have been sent to me by John over on McEwen Designs. Now he's quite new to the YouTube scene. He only has a few videos up on his channel at the minute, but yep, um, I'll put a link to his channel just up here and uh, why not go over and see some of his videos. He's uh, pretty creative when it comes to his editing and his, the music that he uses. He's a big fan of stop motion. So yeah, very creative YouTuber, quite new to the YouTube scene and the YouTube world. So yeah, why not go over and take a look at some of these videos. But yeah, going back to these seeds, uh, thanks for these, John. Uh, much appreciated. I will give these a go. Uh, these were actually sent to, that. Well, these were sent from John, but they were actually sent to Jonas over on Bonsai Cornwall. So he kind of acted as like the middleman in this deal. So John sent them to Jonas. Jonas then forwarded them over to me. So yeah, thanks for that, Jonas. Thanks for being the middleman in this little, little uh, trade. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to sow these and see if we can get these to grow and if I can add a sugar pine to my bonsai collection. Well, I think that's all for this video. So I think I'll, I'll, I'll wrap things up now. So uh, I'll sign off in the usual way. Um, whatever you're doing today, have a great day and I'll catch you on the next one.